Hi, today you join me on a Chadwick Swift. That's a more specialised video looking at a certain subject. And today it's the Smale, the replacement for the tortoise point motor from Circuitron. Hi, welcome back to Chadwick Model Railway. I'm Charlie. So we're looking at the Circuitron switch machines. Um, before we go any further, I think the first thing to do is just to look at the um, tortoise, but then why didn't they call the smale the snail? Seems bizarre. Well, it's actually because the smale stands for slow motion actuator with integrated logic, i.e. I think it's, it's DCC compliant. It has a decoder inside, whereas the basic tortoise doesn't. Now, if you're not used to these things, how do they work? Well, they are quite simple. I mean, here is a nine volt um, burglar, but well, not burglar alarm, a smoke alarm battery. And as you can see, if I put the voltage on it, it moves, it changes. And if I put the uh, voltage on the other way around, if I reverse the polarity, the switch machine switches the other way. And that is exactly how it works. It really is quite straightforward. Now, there are eight terminals on here, as there are on the new version, the Smale. The outside two allow the, the uh, switch machine to work. The inside six terminals uh, um, are split into two groups of three, and they are both single pole, double throw switches. So in one position, you will connect um, this terminal with the next one, and when you throw the machine, it connects that terminal with the other one. And that's ideal for switching things like um, the polarity of an electrofrog point or perhaps a signal or perhaps feedback into a system such as train controller, iTrain or JMRI. So that's the basics of how it works. It's, it's great, quite straightforward. It's a decent machine. But when you apply the voltage and it travels, um, the voltage stays in the, on the point motor. It stays live. Um, it's, it's known as a stall motor, so when it reaches its final position, it will just sit there. It will consume power, but a very small amount. That's how it works. Now, let's move on to the Smale. So what's the difference? Well, the Smale has a DCC uh, decoder inside. So it is a stationary, there is a stationary decoder. And on the back, you can see that there are three terminals. Um, for remote operation of this switch machine and there is a push button and that is to enable you to give the smail a DCC address. Now we all like instructions and when I opened the little box that it came in I found the instructions. Now initially I thought this would be in several languages. It isn't. It's, it's a full-size uh, set of instructions in, in just English. So there's a lot there to read because the Smale has other abilities. There are CVs that you can change in here. You can use it for semaphore signaling, opening gates and all this kind of blah. Um, so it is quite a versatile unit. So I think the first thing to do with this really, if we're on the understanding of how exactly the tortoise switch machine works is, let's have a little look, a closer look at the terminals and what they do. Now I'll just tell you about this little setup. So we have my um, Digitrax transformer underneath the Digitrax DCS100, which is what I use for my sort of bench work. Connected to that is a DT602 controller. Then we have needing track power, we have a piece of track. Now, when you program your smales, you need to do it not on a programming track, but on your main layout. But obviously I can't get over there with all this stuff. So we have the smale, we have two cables. The two cables coming onto these bulldog clips and they track, are going to put them onto this piece of track, which should have track power applied. Now, my little tester shows me that yes, we have track power. So if I now connect, my smale to track power, then we should be able to make it function because its um, supply address was on, it was address one. So if I go to my little controller, and hopefully I can do this the wrong way around so you can see. So we want to go to switch one, throw or close. So and then throw, well that seems to work 
quite uh, readily really a piece of cake that was nice and uh, straightforward right so it's, we know it's now set for address one so now we want an address on our layout so let's pick a number so you're for 101 say so um, I want to go to uh, switch one oh one right but now we need to stick this little baby into programming mode so we need to turn it over and wait for at least five seconds to pass since applying patch track power now clearly we've done that now if I press this little button down for five for five seconds I think it was no nope. let's get a screwdriver no sorry it was press the button down but you had to have track power applied for at least five seconds so if I press this button down and there we can see it flashing so if I throw a command into uh, that address oh well it obviously functions in both directions so now we've got address 101 so we'll throw it and close it and then just for the hell of it let's go to switch one and throw and close that and it shouldn't work no it doesn't so we've clearly successfully changed the DCC address of this smell from one as supplied to 101 which is perhaps what we wanted on our layout and to be perfectly honest that seems quite straightforward really doesn't it now I've disconnected from track power because what I want to do now I want to see if we can switch this manually now without applying any more power to the unit these three terminals will allow remote switching so you can use switches such as these two um, push button switches on your control panel to operate the switch so what I'm going to do is wire these in and give it a go now I must confess putting these in was somewhat fiddly right so the idea now is I press I just press one button and it will change one direction I press the other button and it should change into the other direction so we now need to reconnect back up to track power and I have got track power right yes I have so if I press one button nothing if I press the other one so if I press the other one it should go back the other way well not a surprise really was it so you could imagine these on your control panel just either side of your point or as they say across the pond turn out so you press it press one and then press the other I must confess push buttons aren't my favorite way of doing things so I'll show you what I would prefer okay so there we have it very similar situation as the two uh, push buttons except we don't share a terminal because on these push buttons I put the two blacks into the center terminal and the reds on the outside now this is a uh, single pole double throw switch spring-loaded center off which is quite important really because if I go back to I've got track power yes I have we'll reconnect the point motor again and with this switch if you have it on your control panel to indicate the which which where your trains going to go so if you wanted to take the southern path let's say if you I better turn this over here really, um, then you press it in one direction and then you wanted to take the other route then you just flick it in the other direction and I like these these they're very positive you can't obviously leave it switched on because it's spring loaded so you're not going to sort of burn anything out um, but that's always my preferred option rather than the push buttons which in themselves are straightforward okay I think that all kind of makes sense so now let's look at utilizing the other terminals on the smale so to utilize one of the switches within the snail smale we've brought in 
uh, 12 volts DC on the black cable and it, we switched from either the green to the red or from the red to the green. So the output will either come out on one of these two cables. Now, the cunning thing is I just wired it up to a two aspect signal. Now, if I should change um, switch 101, which is, you remember, is the point. So if I close it, nope, if I throw it, the actuator runs and you can see that the uh, LED goes green. And if I go back the other way, and those two LEDs are in the signal could do just as well as LEDs on your indicator panel to show you which way the point is thrown. And just to prove the point, excuse the pun, if I now use our little um, three position center off switch, it has exactly the same effect as changing the position of the point using a handset. I think it's a smashing bit of kit, but there could there be a limitation? Now here we are with one of my little demo boards and as you can see I have fitted the Smale point motor. So as usual the track power is fed to the outside, the red and the black cables, but I've also brought track power in to two of the terminals on the uh, one of the switches. The other terminal is the uh, frog cable. Now the reason for this is when the um, point motor changes, then it changes the feed to the frog from one polarity to the other. All kind of straightforward. Now if I put it back the other way, you can see that I've left on the, the little switch which allows me to change the point as well as um, the normal sort of track power side from there. So now we need a loco. So here's the top side of that little demo board and as you can see I've left the actuator wire sticking proud and you see the little red flag on it. Here is one of my little 08 shunters and everything's wired up perfectly, it works fine. So if I then run this loco, hopefully you'll see it come onto the point and then when I press reverse it will go back the other way. Lovely, no problems there. Unless of course the point is set in the wrong direction. So if I now change the point and then bring up my loco, we get a short because the frog has the wrong polarity. Now, if you've got your monster layout at this stage, um, you then need to change the point. Well, you can't change the point because you've got a short circuit. So the only way that you can clear this short circuit is with the hand of God. And that might just be in um, a very difficult situation, whereas you actually can't reach it. It could be, I don't know, hidden by back scene or tunnels or fiddle yards or whatever. So with this point motor, with the smale, you cannot change the point motor if you have a short because the smale is fed by track power. And once the track power is switched off by your controller because you have a short, you're stuffed. The only way to fix it is of course with the hand of God. And if you've got a great big train behind this and you start shuffling things back and you've got, you know, 40 coal trucks there, you know, you could have a sort of, you know, quite an incident really. So you need to pull it off from the, um, from the, the frog, change the polarity, and then obviously you can go on your merry way. And again, it will drive across the frog faultlessly. Now I must confess, at Chadwick I do not have this issue because I don't use uh, point motors that have a decoder fitted. I use straight standard ordinary tortoise point motors but they're driven by either a DS64 or a DS74 and the decoders are within these units. Each of these units normally switches four points. So 
the, these are powered by around about 12 volts DC. So when I get the short on the layout, lo and behold, I can still change the point because this um, the, the 12 volts isn't affected. So it runs into the point the wrong way. You go back in, you just change the point and it drives off quite sensibly really. But there is an added, added expense because these things don't necessarily come cheap. I think these things are around about 50 quid and these were kind of, they get on for sort of 70 or 80 pounds now. But whilst we're on the subject of money, um, the, the smells are more expensive. I'm trying, rather than try to tell you how much they all are, um, within dollars or pounds or whatever, roughly speaking, I think the smell tends to be about a third more expensive. Um, sorry, more expensive than the tortoise. But of course, if you've got to buy these components, then that sort of prob that sort of price just sort of disappears, really, because it works out that they're, they're round about the same price because they've got a built-in decoder. But you don't have to buy the 12 volt power supplies either. And using the smell, there's a great deal less wiring. And as far as the sort of the, the buttons and things on your on your control panel, all that, it's all straightforward. You don't have to power that. The power from those switches comes directly from the smell, which is another good idea. And finally, I'd like to finish on a positive for the smell, or, or for circuitron, that's for sure. And because on the side of these components, there is normally a sticker. Whoops. And this sticker is 0307. This one is 2208. Now, these figures refer to the year of manufacture. So uh, in, in 2022, probably August, because it says 08, this was manufactured. Now, if you have the receipt, all the uh, tortoise and snails come with a nine year warranty. So it's something worth thinking about before you start buying uh, second hand ones or whatever on eBay or the rest of it. Obviously, you're not going to get that warranty because you don't have the, ori the original uh, invoice for when you bought them. But they do come with a nine year warranty. <laughs> it's not a great deal of use here in the UK because I'm going to have to post it back to Circuitron in the States and the posters there and back would probably be, it would negate the price of the warranty unless you can send it back to um, a UK supplier, let's say. But there we go, There's, there is a nine year warranty, albeit in the States. So there we go. Smales. You either love them or you hate them. I like them. I think they're a nice bit of kit. But because of those issues with changing the points and feedback into my uh, train controller system, I won't be by them. But there we go. So that wraps up this video. And I'd ask you to subscribe. And there is the subscriber button. Why in particular do I want you to subscribe? Well, quite simply, it's because I want to be one of the first pensioners to make 100,000 subscribers. And also, there's the Patrons button if you'd like to become one, and there's a video here and here, and I'll see you next week.